Rock Island Auction Company's May 17th, 18th, and 19th premier auction at our new facility in Bedford, Texas will feature some of the most collectible NFA items on the market. We'll have another rare FN240 Bravo. We'll have a Cadillac Gauge Stoner 63 and a Marymount M60. Those are super rare and super collectible items. But here's four items right here that I have picked out, not because of rarity, but because of kind of the collectability and shootability. Now starting off with this M2 carbine conversion. Now this started life as a M1 carbine Saginaw steering gear, but until May 86, you could legally convert a semi-auto to a machine gun. And this has a Syndra registered M2 carbine conversion kit. Now even though the M1 carbine was a semi-auto, after seeing the widespread use of the German submachine guns on the battlefield, the U.S. Ordnance Department started sending out field conversion units to convert these to an M2 carbine, making it a select fire gun. So this is a really cool little piece of history right here that's shootable and collectible as well. These are a great way to get into the machine gun market now. Now let's take a look at the next one that I really like right here. Now next we have the Steyr Army Universal Gewehr, or what we call the AUG. This was accepted in the military service by the Austrian military in 1977. And importation of the semi-auto versions came into the U.S. in the 80s and then was discontinued due to the Bush assault weapons ban in 1989. This has a qualified manufacturing sear pack in it. This is a nice, really nice conversion unit. And this is starting to get more towards the higher end of your shooters right here. But this is a great, great gun right here and it's fun to shoot. Now next we have a really, really neat gun right here. This is an Armalite AR-18 carbine serial number one. This is pretty much where it started right here. These went into production 1963. Eugene Stoner has left Armalite. Art Miller was considered the man on this gun right here. Now the AR-18 was developed as a low cost alternative to the M16, whereas the M16 used forged aluminum lowers and uppers and required machining. The AR-18 was primarily just stampings of sheet metal. Now with the exception of the barrel, the trunnion, the bolt carrier, the bolt, and a few other parts on here, just about everything on this gun is stamped. And at the time, that was the cheap alternative to the way that they were making the M16s. But now you come into how things are done today with CNC, and stampings are just outrageous. So it's kind of amazing to see how this really turned around from being a cheaply made gun to being a really expensive gun to make now today. And this is serial number one, making this exceedingly rare. This is one that I really wouldn't want to shoot. This is a great collector right here. And just seeing how Armalite developed this. Now here we have another nice Armalite AR-18, which is an exceedingly rare piece, which is serial number four. I mean, we've got two great serial number ranges of Armalites right here. Serial number one, serial number four. And this is just fantastic. I mean, I'd have to shoot it a little bit just because it's so cool. And another cool thing about the Armalite AR-18 is the side folding stock versus where the M16 had a receiver extension, buffer, and buffer spring back here. You can fold that, shoot it closed. I mean, it's really neat. Now, another interesting piece of history about the Armalite AR-18 was even though it was a lower cost alternative to the M16 just never really found any adoption by military police it was just starting to slowly fade off into history until the Irish Republican Army started getting lots of these guns into Northern Ireland and they found widespread use with the IRA Provo, and they were so prolific in use, you'd see them in murals all over Northern Ireland, and there was even a song called Me Little Armalite that was written about this gun. And so that kind of sealed its fate in history, and you'll even see the famous picture of the girl with the polka dot skirt with the AR-18 in Northern Ireland. 
So that's a really interesting point about this gun that it just would have kind of faded off until it saw the use in Northern Ireland. So there's what I have of four really cool guns that's going to be in our May Premier Auction in Bedford, Texas. You can come and take a look at these, handle them in our May 16th preview day, and then auction is May 17th, 18th, and 19th. Be sure to check it out. We'll see you there.